Hello and welcome to Game Soup, where we're going to be explaining to Ed how to play an aggro deck. He doesn't have a lot of formal training, or formal training, he doesn't have a lot of training, he doesn't have a lot of experience besides Hearthstone in playing card games, and he was asking me how to play Hunter properly the other day. A lot of people think that Hunter is, it's just easy to play, it's easier to play aggro, it's easy to play stuff like Hunter or even Zoo, which isn't so much an aggro deck as much as Hunter is, but um, it's not an aggro deck. But um, it, it does take some skill to play Hunter, and I see people make mistakes all the time with aggro decks and even Hunter decks, and myself included. So um, I wanted to just uh, help you guys out and help him out at the same time to uh, explain how to play a very aggressive deck. And um, I'm going to show you guys my particular build. Uh, my particular build is one of the most aggressive builds you can have in Hearthstone. It's one of the most aggressive, if not the most aggressive, deck you can have in Hearthstone at the moment. Um, so we're just going to go through the cards real quick. The Arcane Shot, most people don't run this. Now, this deck's gotten kind of kind of popular, so they're, they are out there now. But um, in the past, there haven't been a lot of Arcane Shots being played. It's really, mainly, it's nice to just sneak in the extra damage to their face at the end of the game. Um, just that extra two damage really helps. Um, then we've got Lepronome is pretty standard. You just want a lot of death rattles that are small like Lepronome, Web Spinner, Haunted Creeper, Loot Hoarder, Mad Scientist, and obviously we're using Undertaker because that's pretty much every deck that's um, aggressive at all will use an Undertaker and lots of death rattle minions. That's that's just how the, the meta is right now. And it's just it's a very powerful card. So we have a lot of one drops and a lot of two drops and a few three drops. Um, I mean, I could go over it specifically, but you guys, if you have, if you've even tried to play Hunter, you've probably played with most of these cards. So I'm not going to go over every card individually. Um, I only use one Unleash the Hounds. Uh, the main reason for that is a lot of times it's a dead card if if they don't have any minions on the board if they've gotten killed by your um, your explosive trap or removed by freezing trap something like that or. Um, any number of reasons, but a lot of the time they just don't have enough minions on the board for it to be worthwhile And if you have two of them in your hand, it's even worse uh, Arcane Golem, uh, it wasn't played that often, but it's starting to see a lot more play in Hunter And it's just a really solid way to finish them off. Hopefully you're finishing them off with it But sometimes you'll be playing it um, earlier. You don't usually want to play it earlier than turn 5 though in in a Hunter deck or in any deck really, but um just because you don't want them getting that extra mana crystal. It matters less and less though as the game goes. Wolf Rider is just a good extra, you generally want to finish them off. It's a, it's, it's a good finisher and also it's okay in the middle of the game. It's just, it, it gets taken care of easily, but it's three mana for three damage. And that's pretty much all we're trying to do in a hunter deck is go face, um, do as much damage to their head as possible. So it's a pretty solid card. This is, not a lot of people are playing the Black Knight, but um, most people will play Leroy in this slot, but I don't actually have Leroy. So I'm playing the Black Knight in, in his spot, and he does really he does uh, pretty well, actually. Um, there's almost always going to be a, a taunt when you have him. I, almo I almost always use him to kill a taunt. He's very rarely ever just a 6 mana 4-5. Um, so I find him to be pretty effective. It's it's not the same exact role as Leroy, but it helps your other guys get through. So he's pretty solid. Any questions so far, Ed? I know I just rambled on for about three minutes there. Uh, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it in action. That's all. Um, it does seem really aggressive, which is surprising because typically, you know, you associate super aggro decks with warriors. You know, so how does this maybe how does this compare to an aggro warrior deck? Um, let's see. It's gonna be it's gonna be fast. It's ger generally Hunter is going to be the fastest of the fast. So if you were, if you were an aggro, say you were the aggro warrior versus an aggro hunter, you would be, um, you would be the one probably trying to control the board more than he would. And also, it's it's going to be difficult to be d making the best use of your weapons because the hunter has the hero power that hits you in the head, and they're going to be going aggro onto your head. So it's kind of a rough matchup if you are an aggro warrior. Um, okay. So here, we're on the play, we really, really want to get an Undertaker in this meta. A lot of the time, most of the time, when you mulligan, you want to mulligan for the, uh, you want to mulligan for a good curve, so we'd probably keep the Haunted Creeper, but Undertaker is so overly powered that a lot of times I just like to throw everything back and try to go for an Undertaker. Is Undertaker OP, like, uh, 
just in this deck, or is it just in general? Is it an overpowered? In general, card? in general, in this current meta, yeah, it's it's pretty overpowered. Mm -hmm. So this is unfortunate. This is pretty rare that we don't have anything to do on turn one. So we're just gonna pass, and we're against the shaman, which can be a really rough matchup for a hunter, especially if he's playing the anti aggro build that is around right now, which I played for a while a couple weeks ago. And he's coining a Haunted Creeper, which is... should be okay. So we're going to play the Mad Scientist here, because the Loot Hoarder will die to the Haunted Creeper. And with with a Hunter in general, you just... with a Aggro Hunter, you generally want to just go face as much as possible, as with any real Aggro deck. All right. So he's going to take out our Mad Scientist. We had a 50-50 chance of Freezing Trap or Explosive Trap. We got Explosive Trap, so that will hurt his board. So we're looking at mm, Arcane Golem, Wolf Rider, or Animal Companion. Animal Companion will get us a Pig, a 4-4, four, four, or a 2-4. Two, 2-4 four. Two, four will die to both Spiders. The 4-4 four, four will also die to both Spiders. The 4-2 would be good. So Yeah, this isn't this isn't too good, actually. We go Wolf Rider to the Yeah, I wish we had an Eagle Harm bow here. So we could just play the Wolf Rider and we the Unfortunately, that 0-3 is really going to cause a lot of problems for us, so I think I'm going to have to take that out. With the Wolf Rider? Probably, which is a really bad start. This is a really, really bad start for an Aggro Warrior. I've gone sometimes four or five games never attacking a minion, but that thing's going to be a real problem. It's not going to get taken out by the Explosive Trap. Yeah. So this is, this is a pretty unfortunate start. Uh, on the next turn, most likely the play is going to be Loot Hoarder and Hero Power. You want to be, from turn 4 especially and on, you want to be using the Hero Power every turn whenever possible, unless you have a really good reason not to. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Okay, so we could silence one of those, or we could just play Loot Hoarder and silence it later if we silence it now. Yeah, he's playing, it looks like, uh, an anti-aggro build, so that's really bad for us. What makes this deck anti-aggro against you? Um, well, Shaman is, in general, pretty anti-aggro mm -hmm. uh, because of cards like Feral Spirit. Shaman can, well, Shaman can be, in general. A lot of the cards just that are good on a, on in a mid-range deck are also anti-aggro, and there's just a lot of Hunters and Zoos going around right now right so there's a lot there's a lot of shamans that are just playing specifically decks with a lot of taunts in it and this guy's just extra extra good against aggro okay so here we're going to do the same thing where we want to hear a power in the head and play most likely a three drop but also we've got arcane shot which we could use to take out the four one So we'll see what we get with the Animal Companion. And we got the Pig, which we'll just use to take the 4-3 down, and we'll... Yeah, we'll just shoot him in the head. So how important is it to use the Hero Power every turn here, then? Like, pretty critical? Yeah, to, to win, you're gonna... You want to use it uh, as much as possible. The reason being is that if you play... I'm gonna see if I can explain this. Um, I know why, but let's see if I can explain it. Um... Let's say I, would, I were to play the Loot Hoarder instead. Mm -hmm. The Loot Hoarder is, it could get in for two damage, and then and then it'll, it'll most likely die though. It'll most likely die this turn or the turn after, so all I'm getting through with is two damage anyway, and I use the card. Right. Um, whereas if I just use the Hero Power, that's just two damage to his head, I don't waste a card. So I get to use my other cards for, I get to, I won't run out of cards as quickly, and I'll still be doing the two damage that I would be doing with most of the cards. Okay, that makes sense. So it's just pretty much a, like a constant two damage every turn, and you don't have to waste your your minions instead. 
Right. Yeah, you don't have to waste like. the other cards in your hand. But okay. uh, we're going to start actually taking a lot of damage. We don't want to go on defense here. <laughs> that, that would be really bad. Um, so we, we could play... Let's see. Let me think real quick. He's got... Yeah, Explosive Trap is no good. Arcane Shot is fine, but not great. And then... Yeah, none of the, none of the we don't have any great plays here. Yeah, this is maybe, we should, maybe we should just delete this video because <laughs> I wanted to win. Yeah. All right. This is just the most mana efficient play. It's not not very good though. It's really not very good. Well, what's he gonna do? To you? He's gonna do oh, nine to you. Oh. What secret was that? Was that explosive? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's not good. The the explosive it's it's good to just hit him in the we'll hit him in the head with it. It's two extra damage. We do have a, a good amount of damage in our hand, but I don't think it's gonna be enough enough reach to get there. And if he has any kind of taunt, it's gonna stop the, the arcane golem and the, the loot hoarder's most likely gonna die anyway. Yeah. So he's gonna do that. We're gonna get a card, so we can silence this zero three. Which we're really going to want to do. Oh, we could just kill it with the Arcane Shot, but we really don't want to waste damage. Yeah, Silence seems like a good option here. But, I don't know. Yeah, this this kind of thing, we, we you almost don't... Oh, that's bad, too. <laughs> we, we might wind up silencing one of the taunts. Yeah, we're, we're, almost, we're most likely going to lose this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is a really tough matchup. So... We can go defense now, I guess. We could silence that. And then... Yeah, the 2-3 would we'll take that down. Yeah, we might have to just use the arcane shot. On, some, on something just so we can get through, unfortunately. So we could silence this arcane shot. This... And drop some guys. Or we could just leave that alive. You know, we could just leave that alive and go go all out and just silence one of these and kill the other. Yeah, okay, let's just do that. Silence that one. Then we go um, this guy. And shoot him in the head. Wow. All right. So uh, most of our guys take out can take out most of his guys, but um, we stand a chance of him being able to kill us pretty soon. Or he stands a chance of killing us. And we've got kill... The re oh, also the reason why you would think I would play kill command, because this guy's most likely going to die before my next turn, right? And he's a beast. We need him for kill command, right? right. Yeah. But when you look at kill command, it does three damage. If you have a beast, it does five damage. So that's an extra two damage mm -hmm. that we would get from this. But we can just do the extra two damage here, save this for later. He doesn't know that we have it, right? Oh. We can use it for something else, potentially. But it's most okay. likely just going to go to his head. It seems better, like if, especially if you're going to be super aggro, that you want to save that for him, for his head, you know? Right. Yeah, you want, you want to save it and... You generally just want to keep it in your hand, even if he, you don't want him to know. We don't want him to know that we have um, 8 to 10 damage in our hand right now. Right. Or is that 8? No, it's 7 to 9. Sorry. No. 7 to 9 damage in our hand. Okay, yeah, we're, def we're no. done. It's going to take 2 now. We can't get through with this anymore. Any secrets left? Uh, there's one freezing trap. Ooh. So that's fourteen versus thirteen. He's got nine. He's thirteen. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I don't know why he's not killing us. I guess we can just sit here and hope that he won't kill us. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. He might not see it. That would be nice. This is, a, this is a high ranked game though. He's got to, right? He's got to notice. I don't know. I notice I notice people still make mistakes up here. Really? Yep. Hmm. 
I still do sometimes, but. So the idea here is just to ignore the minions and go straight for the face. Yeah, almost always, unless you have a really good reason not to, like taking down the that totem earlier in the game. Basically, the only time you want to kill a minion with your with your hunter when you're when you're an aggro hunter. Basically, the only time you want to be killing a minion is if it's going to prevent you from doing more damage in a turn coming up. Mm -hmm. So if, if you can do more damage. If the, the odds are that you're going to do more damage over time by killing one of the minions, that's when you do it. The only reason you want to kill a minion, it's not to control the... Uh, yeah, it's not to it's not to prevent the damage from coming to you. It's not even to prevent him from trading with your minions. It's to prevent him from... To, to make sure that you get more damage in at a later turn. Right. So you're not really even worried about your own life. No, you, you... If you're going to... If you if you're getting to the point where... Like in this last game, you notice that I made some really... Um, what do you call it? Really dangerous type of plays toward yeah. the end because once you're once they're on the on the offense, you're you're done anyway. Wow, you're you're pretty much going to be done anyway unless you can kill them with the hero power if they're if you've gotten them low enough that you can kill them with the hero power. Here I'm going to keep the mad scientist because it's so overpowered. <laughs> um, that's the only other card I usually keep besides Undertaker when I'm on the play. We're gonna yeah, just pass. Uh, if you're on the draw, you generally you just want to keep you just want to keep a decent curve. You kind of just mulligan normally when you're on the draw. Uh, here we're just going to play the scientist because it's the strongest and it doesn't die to the hero power. Uh, let's see. So on the following turn. Yeah, we don't have... Hopefully we'll draw into a 3-drop or, or a Leper Gnome or Undertaker or something. Okay, he's going to backstab our guy. We're probably getting the Explosive Trap. No, we got the Freezing Trap. Okay, so he's testing for Explosive Trap. It's not, so he knows that it's either Snake Trap or Freezing Trap. We don't have Snake Trap in the deck. Um, so here we can either go Loot Hoarder and... Leper Gnome, or we can go Leper Gnome Hero Power. Um, Loot Hoarder's going to do two damage and probably die. And yeah, I, I'm, I think it's probably best to just go Hero Power. Leper Gnome Hero Power. Here, usually you want to start doing your Hero Power on turn four and up, but here I felt better doing it this way. Um, he's gonna he's gonna hit us with the knife, and he's got to make another knife here. Who would want to take out the Loot Hoarder? Oh, he's going to heal himself. That's not good. But, um... It's still okay. Um, so here it's a choice between the Loot Hoarder or the Haunted Creeper. We are going to play the Haunted Creeper because it's a lot more annoying to kill. It does a little less damage, but it's actually going to put damage in, whereas the Loot Hoarder is not going to put any damage in right now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that, and as usual, the Hero Power. That's amazing to use Hero Power, like, from here on out. Yeah, that's, that's really a key thing. That's one of the keys of playing an aggro hunter, is to use the hero power as much as possible. Because I typically think, oh, if I have to use my hero power on turn 4 or turn 5, that means I'm in a really bad spot. But not with this, not at all. Yeah, a lot of the time, you don't want to use your hero power early. It's kind of a waste. Like, in most classes, you don't. Mm -hmm. Usually it's better to play a card than, than to play the hero power. Um, here we have a pretty nice play with Undertaker Loot Hoarder Hero Power. Uh, we could silence that if we wanted to prevent some damage, but we don't really care that much about taking any damage. And all our guys die to everything anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, we're just going to do that play. We're going to play Undertaker and Loot Hoarder. Shoot him in the head and hit him. So we got to remember that he does have that Earth Ring Farseer in his head, so he technically has three more life than he does. At any point now, he could just gain three life. It'll cost him five mana, so it's a little inefficient, but later in the game, when the mana doesn't matter as much... Okay, he got his gadget. <laughs> I usually beat Miracle Rogues with Aggro Hunter. I usually tend to win, really? but it might just be luck, I don't know. But. Um, well, it seems like aggro is one of the best types to play against Miracle Rogues. You know, yeah, just it's, it's pretty good because you can kill them before they get their combos going. But yeah. he's starting to get his, he's starting to get it going. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But uh, we got another Undertaker, but nothing hmm. to, that that can buff it. 
Great, we got animal companion. There's nothing to silence, so we're gonna hold this guy. So that's gonna be animal companion plus undertaker. We'll play the animal companion first because it's a random effect. And nice. It's a bear. That's fine. That'll trade with one of his guys. We'd rather have the pig right now, but that's that's oh, yeah. still pretty good. And we'll put the undertaker out just to have a little extra pressure. And we'll go face. As usual. So this this game is going better than the last game in that we don't have to we're not worried about taking any minions out. Especially in Miracle Rogue there's there's um very rarely very many minions on the board yeah. to even trade with, and if there are they half the time they got stealth. So now we just watch him play. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Miracle Rogue myself. I, I never play it. Yeah, me either. It's kind of boring to watch. Yeah. Is it any more fun to play if you've played it? Maybe. I don't know. I've uh, literally I don't have the, I don't I don't have the cards. Oh, really? I don't well, I don't have the legendaries. I never I didn't have Leroy before and uh -huh. now most people run Malagos and I don't have him. He's going to go face. Hmm. Hmm, he's going to take two damage. All right. I guess he really doesn't want to take it out of his gadget. Well, yeah, if, if you do, then it's over. Yeah, I could silence his gadget, though, now, which oh, yeah. is nice. So I think that's what we're probably going to do. We could silence it, and then he's not going to—he's not likely to get that many more minions. He might get up to three, so we could unleash the hounds and just go face with the hounds. Um, or we could kill command in the head. I think I want to save the kill command, though, to hit him next turn so that we have the most face damage because we're going to have two, four, seven, up to nine yeah. face damage and we'll also have hero power so we will have up to 11 damage next turn so we can get him down that low now so we'll see and we'll just go face yeah oh, that means you have lethal next turn then yeah if you can do 11 damage yeah he's got a He's got to kill us. He's got to kill... Um, kill most of our guys and gain that life. Unless he can kill us. Which is possible. He's rogue. Uh, is it possible? Yeah, it's... There's a, there's a chance, but it's not very likely. What, what would he need? He would need double eviscerate. He hasn't played an eviscerate yet, right? So he would need double eviscerate and probably some other stuff. I don't think he has it. He's probably going to gain life. Yeah. Right, he's going to use that to gain the life, and then he's going to take down two of our guys. But we are going to have... So what do we have? Four... Okay, now we don't... Now we do not have it. That might put us over... Ooh. Let's see, we've got... Two, four, six, nine... Eleven. We have eleven. <laughs> We're one short. Did you All get right. hero power? You did. Yeah, uh -huh. we can double check. It's two, four, six... Nine. Yeah. Eleven. Eleven. We could get the extra two if we play the Haunted Creeper. How many do we have? That would two, be two, four, five, six. No, yeah, and we need an extra mana though to do everything. So we can't do everything. So we are gonna hold on to the arcane shots, I think, because they're the most secret. He could do four, seven, ten, um, ten damage to us at least next turn. But we're gonna subtract some of that, so it'll be seven because the explosive trap will kill one of those. Um, and then we could also arcane shot that, but we just want to make sure we're going to be able to kill him next turn. This is where we're doing math, so we'll get him down to 10, um, 10 plus next turn we will get him down, we'll, let's see, 8, 10, shoot, alright, we'll just do this this and no we can't do that do this and no I think I think we'll just do nothing because he's gonna lose both of us yeah he's gonna lose both of those yeah, I think this is correct because next turn we have we'll have nine damage and he's gonna take the damage from the explosive trap unless he doesn't trigger it okay so he tried to trigger um, freezing trap or snake trap there. So I guess he knows what it is. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. So he knows that he's going to lose all of his guys. Yeah, he's playing like he knows he's going to lose all of his guys. 
but he's, I mean, he has to attack you at some point, right? Maybe not. He's... He's a miracle rogue, so he could kill. He could kill us with spells, but it's going to be a little rough to do. He's got ten. So, and do we have it? We have five. Yeah, you so got it. Yeah, we got it. Nice. Right. So we just dropped the web spinner. Shoot him in the head. This. <laughs> this. And this. Wow. So that, that happens... You don't usually get that many of your your um, your reach spells, the spells that you that can hit them in the head, but usually that's how you finish them off is with a bunch of those, uh, a bunch yeah, like one two maybe three like we just did mm -hmm. of those type of spells in hero power. So that's uh, that's how you want it to go when you play an aggro hunter. So that's pretty much how you do it. I don't know. Do you want to do one more? Or do you just want to end it? Whatever. I guess I don't know. Do one more. Uh, yeah, we could, let's let's run one more, I guess. So, and, so yeah, you, and, yeah do, go ahead. Do you usually end the matches below turn ten? Is that like you want to end indicator? it as quickly as possible? The fastest I've ever done is turn four. I'm not sure if it's even possible for for aggro hunter to end a game faster than turn four. Turn four, that's crazy. What does so, that involve? Uh, a lot of luck and undertakers. <laughs> We haven't seen the Undertakers do anything yet, though. But generally, you're going to win on maybe turn 7 or 8. I would say that's I usually win around there. Okay. Uh, we don't want 3 drops. We want our best 1 drop. Web Spinner's pretty nice, actually, though. I mean, we could keep both of these and just play them both on our first turn, but we really want to try and get a get Undertaker here. So I think I'm going to keep the Lever Gnome. I like it because it does more damage. Uh, so we're and we're either against Zoo or Handlock here, most likely. That's the only the only Warlock decks we ever really see right now. All right, we're against Zoo. <laughs> so we we're we're on aggro either way. Yeah. Zoo is the control in this matchup. I was gonna say, does it even matter like what, what the other player's deck is really? Does does it usually not affect how you play your cards or? Um, it matters if you get a, if you get another Hunter matchup. Hmm. If you're if you're matched up against another hunter, then then it matters. And um, you might play a little faster if you know they have a lot of taunts in their deck. You might try and um, put more damage in more quickly rather than um, put in the work to to set up for a later turn. Right. Yeah, the object really is just damage. You just want to put in the most possible damage. So here, unfortunately, this is this is pretty lousy. This is really this is really weak. So we can put two damage into the one three, and play the mad scientist, I guess, because we don't want him having the choice to use his uh, argent on our on our leper gnome. Right. Um, yeah, Mad Scientist is our strongest card. If we play the Web Spinner, it's easy for him to take it out with his uh, Flame Imp or something like that. So I'll just do that, I guess. Okay, yeah, just so that thing's weaker and we have pressure now with the Mad Scientist, it can take out the 1-1 the one, one taunt on the next turn. I was going to silence it and kill it. Maybe. He might kill it. If he doesn't kill it, we'll kill the 1-1 one, one next turn. It's, it's probably smart for him to just do that and go face with the other two. Or he could do that to be extra, extra safe. Hmm. And then he goes face with that. So, yeah, we're not in a great position, but now we're going to get a really big Undertaker. <laughs> so we could either go Animal Companion. We could also do this, which is pretty nice. We could take out two of his guys. His two best guys, but that'll put us on. We'll be on defense, or we could get a three-four Undertaker out. That sounds good. So I think we're gonna do that. Wow. So now we've got a, a board here, and most of our guys trade for most of his guys. His Flame Imp can take out our one-one. That's the only difference there. But he might want to use that Flame Imp to take down our Undertaker. He's 
He wants to clear our board right now. Zoo is, uh, Zoo usually, well, Zoo just, it wants to control the board. Yeah. Zoo is more of a mid-range, uh, mid-range type of deck for the most part. Um, maybe Tempo, I don't know, but, uh, I've played a fair amount of Zoo, but I just I just like it for the board swarming, you know. Yeah, Zoo, Zoo is um. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's really any harder than playing Aggro Hunter. I don't I don't think either one's really better or takes that much more skill to play. A lot of people like to like to make fun of Hunter. Maybe I don't know. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, a lot of people don't like Hunter. I'm, I'm kind of included myself. I, I think it's a little bit overpowered and it's pretty annoying to play against. <laughs> But um, I, I kind of like playing it. I like playing all the classes. I mean, I like playing aggro. I like playing control. I like playing mid range. I'm probably best at mid range. Uh, I like shaman a lot. And and most of the time in in arena, you're playing mid range, which is mostly what I play. Okay, so we've got a. Okay, this is pretty awesome actually. Because we're not going to play this because it's not good with mana. Same thing with this, not good with mana. And what we're going to do is we're going to play the Explosive Trap. And we're going to shoot him in the head. And now <laughs> when he tries to attack us, he loses both of his guys. Wow. And he's going to take two damage. So that puts us in a, in a decent position. Um, the nice thing about Hunter versus Warlock is that he, if he life taps, that's good for you. Because it's just more damage to his head. Yeah. Nice. So we, we got... We're pretty good with that explosive trap. That was a pretty good good thing to have there. Wow. So now we can play one of our three drops, um, not unleash the hounds. And we'll hold the Kodo. So yeah, we're just going to play this guy. And it's the worst thing we could have got, but it's fine. No, it's not the worst. It's fine. And we'll shoot with that. Um, if we got the bear, that would be fine, because the flame imp would have to get through that, I would have to attack it, and then we would still have four damage on the board. Oh, well, it wouldn't work very good against that. It would work exactly the same as this, I guess. Yeah. So he's got, he has, he's, he's got a pretty aggressive board right now. Um, but I still don't think we want to play defensively here. So this is kind of unfortunate. Hmm. We could take out the four. We maybe we should. We could take out the four two with unleash the hounds. Because the other play is haunted creeper, which doesn't put in that much damage. How much damage do we have in our hand, though? We could go unleash the hounds and go face with the hounds, and then play arcane shot to be on curve. Hit him in the head. So we'll hit, we could hit him for six right now, putting him at eight. Next turn, if he doesn't remove the hounds. We could get in four, five, six, seven, only seven. <laughs> Pretty lousy. So we could hold we could hold the UTH, I guess, and it's just not very good. It's not a very good use of mana to play the Haunted Creeper, and the Haunted Creeper doesn't put that much damage in. Right away. There, we'll just do the Unleash the House thing. It's a little bit of a ballsy play, but we'll just do it. And we will arcane shot him in the head just to be to be aggressive, <laughs> and we'll hope that he isn't able to put in a whole lot of damage. He could have Doom Guard or Soulfire, which is going to put 11 damage. If he played Soulfire, put 11 damage. Doom Guard will put 12 damage to our head. So we're going to assume he doesn't have both. That would be pretty unfair, but it's RNG sometimes. If he played Doom Guard, he would have to discard everything. Right, he would probably play something else before playing Doom Guard, though. He yeah. probably has a one or two drop in his hand, because he is Zoo. Yeah. So this is this is a pretty close game. We could have played defensively, but whenever I'm in doubt, I usually just continue going face, and he's gonna he's gonna do the defensive play and try to control the board, which is probably good for him to do. We kind of scare him this way too. <laughs> well, he might go face with that. Oh. Oh. Mm. All right, so he's going to take that with that and do, yeah. So five, nine, 10, 12. He has 12. We can take this down with our stampy. 
Um, oh, where do we have? Well, we have lethal, right? No, we only have seven. No, no we don't have lethal. One off. Right, right. We're one off. Okay. Oh man. So yeah, we'll take out his. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So we'll just prevent lethal here. And shoot him in the head. So next turn we definitely have lethal, but he, he almost any like he almost anything can not almost anything. There's there's several cards in this deck that he can draw into and he's gonna life tap, obviously Whoa. here. Yeah. He it's has it's, to. it's it's yeah, he knows he has to. He knows that we kill him. Oh he's got it. That's things. Soul fire? Yeah, he probably just threw soul fire. So that's how it goes on or Doom Guard, Whoa. same thing. Yeah, so we lost to a top deck, which kind of stinks, but um, so the, we went with the we went the most aggressive plays, which I still think was was the right the right thing to do because we came down to it really came down to a few points of damage there that we were going to have to put in on the last turn. So I think that was the right play, but it was a it was a rough game. It was it was very close. So anyway, even though we lost two of the games, that's. A rough version of how you play Agro Hunter. Do you have any final questions? Uh, is it your favorite deck? No. <laughs> it is pretty fun to play, though. Yeah. I've been playing a lot, trying to ladder, but we're getting towards the end of the month, so don't know if I will get Legend this month. But, um, yeah, I've tried so many decks, so many decks, trying to get to Legend, and I wind up, I wound up using Hunter the most this season. I really like this Paladin, Paladin aggro deck, though. But um, anyway, any other questions related to playing Hunter aggro? I think I get it now. Go for the face. Pretty and much. A lot more than that. Pretty but much, yeah. When in doubt, you go for the face. You use the hero power as much as possible from turn four on generally, sometimes from turn three on, and mostly you ignore the board. <laughs> but on a rare occasion, you will want to attack a minion. Maybe once, roughly, if I had to put a guess on it, I would say every two or three games I'll attack a minion. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only to increase your chances of putting in more damage later. Right. So that's, I guess that's about it. All right. I hope you guys learned some tricks from this. All right, cool. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the demo. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching Game Soup. See you next time. Goodbye.